So let's continue on here and see what that looks like in practice. I'm going to add some boilerplate. I add a label maintainer of Chris Fidal, which is to say that I'm the maintainer of this image. And then I'm just going to throw some more boilerplate at us. Okay. So we are setting an environment variable, Debian front end, and telling it to be non-interactive because we don't want any interaction when we install this stuff here. This is all standard to installing stuff on Debian or Ubuntu servers. So there's nothing really Docker specific here. I'm just setting an environment variable and then I'm running commands. So this is exactly like what I did before. We're gonna do apt get update and then we get apt get install, just some basic stuff. And then we move on here. So why do I have two apt get blocks here? So two commands that run here and do a bunch of stuff but aren't combined. It's because I actually need to install based on 18.04, I need to install this TZ data package so I can change the time zone and make sure it's set to UTC. And this actually avoids the installation of Nginx and PHP asking me some interactive stuff to do later. So we install GNU PG, which helps us do some encryption stuff, I believe. The TZ data package, which lets us configure the time zone of the server, and we're going to set it to UTC. So I have to get update and then run apt get install. And to be consistent, I can actually move this to a new line install these two packages and then set UTC into the Etsy time zone files and then reconfigure the time zone in a non-interactive way so that the time zone of the server of this Docker container gets set to UTC. And then the next block, I run another command. Now remember what I said with the Docker image, every change, every instruction we give it creates a new image, does the changes and then commits that change. So it's really good to have the least amount of different blocks of stuff of different instructions in a Docker file as possible because that makes it quicker. And this is all related to Docker's uh, layered file system where you can make uh, really quick changes to your Docker file without having to rerun all this stuff. So what you want to do is use the fewest instructions possible in your Docker file that you can, the least amount of stuff that you can do. And usually, typically, it's good practice to cram as much as you can in into one run instruction or as few run instructions as possible. So we're going to do apt get update, we'll install curl and zip and these other things that we typically need uh, as dependencies for Composer to run, curl, zip, unzip, and get. And we'll install Supervisor as well and SQLite 3 in case you happen to use that. And then Nginx and then all our PHP stuff, including the PHP modules. Here we install Composer. And then we do uh, a make directory to get the run PHP to make sure the directory is there because I found in some cases that does not get created automatically. And then we do some cleanup, right? Because we want our images to be as small as possible. So we delete files when and where we can. So we auto remove anything that can be removed. We clean up extra files and remove stuff from the various temporary directories. And then finally, we make sure Nginx is not being run as a daemon. So it doesn't get pushed into the background. And I'll get into that a little bit later and actually end the instructions here. So let's go back over here, we'll do docker image ls, and we see we have these images. I'm actually going to delete this image because right, I'm not going to use it anymore. So docker image remove my nginx at the tag latest. Get rid of that. Great. Now we have a docker file here. I'm going to get into docker and get into the app directory. And this is where we have our docker file and we can build this image. So I'm going to do docker build and we're going to say a tag. So what do we want to name this? Well, we want to name this shipping docker slash app. This is going to be the app container in our shipping docker namespace. So you can name an image in this namespaced fashion where you have like a username or a project name or whatever you want and then the actual image name. And then of course the tag and I'll just keep tagging this latest for now. And I'm going to set the context and this period just means the current directory. And that is the directory where our docker file lives. So we need to tell the docker build command where the docker file is. So you can actually do that with the dash s flag. So I can say in the current directory, that's where my docker file is. But you also set the context of where everything is, where you want to run stuff. That is not necessarily a directory that the docker file is in, but it is the directory that um, anything referenced in the docker file is relative to. So if the docker file references any files on your local file system to pull into the Docker image that it makes, that's going to be relative to whatever directory you set as the context. And that context is just the current directory. So if I was actually up two levels back in our PHP app directory, that would be docker build dash T and our container name and tag and the dash F flag would be the Docker directory app Docker file. And the context would be the same directory Docker app. Okay, so now it's building that image based off of that Docker file we just made, and it's doing all the steps, right? So we saw the step, it's from 1804. 
It sees I have that image locally, so it's basing off of that. It's applying the label and see how it says removing intermediate container. So for every change, it made a new container and did a commit, and then it removes that intermediate container to clean up after ourselves. Same thing after the env flag, same thing after the first run command, and then we'll see the same thing after the second run command, which is buried above somewhere. You might see some output that's colored. Don't really worry about it. This is still working. All right, and it's finished. So successfully tagged shipping Docker app at latest. So if I do Docker image ls, we'll see we have shipping Docker app at latest. So we can actually run a container off of this. I'll do Docker run again. So it would run a new container off of our image. I'll remove it when it's finished just so I don't have to delete that container myself when I stop the container. Dash D to push it into the background. I don't wanna, I'm gonna, not gonna do that. I'm gonna make it interactive again. I'm gonna keep it in the foreground. So the dash I and the dash T flags there, which are just added together. It could also just look like this. We're gonna run the shipping Docker app image at the latest tag, and I'm gonna do what? What should I do here? I can run any command I want. So here I run whatever command I want to start in that container. So I could run bash, and we'll see which nginx, nginx is installed, which PHP, PHP is, is installed, which composer, composer is installed, PHP is at version 7.25, great. I'll exit this, and instead of running bash, I'm gonna run nginx, so docker ps, Okay, it didn't run, see? Docker PS will show any container that is running, and we don't have any, so I'll do PS-A, and we'll see we also don't have any container running, which means this killed itself. This stalker ran and then stopped immediately. And I'm gonna get rid of the dash dash rm flag so we can see this a little better. Okay, so once again, it's not running. Dash A, no longer running. It exited with an exit status code of zero three seconds ago, which is actually not an error code. It doesn't think it ran with an error, but I will show you what happened. So let's run this again. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to put the remove flag in here and we'll run bash and I do PSAUX. So we see the, the only thing running here is bash because I'm in bash right now. It's the one command that's running inside of this container. If I try to run nginx, it'll actually start, but it gets pushed into the background. So nginx is actually running here, but it's pushed into the background, right? If it was in the foreground, it would be running here in my terminal session still and it'll be outputting log output or something like that. And Docker doesn't like this, right? I told Docker before to run the command nginx, and Docker tries to monitor that to keep nginx up and running. But because nginx pushed itself into the background, that doesn't work. So Docker loses track of it and can't keep it up and running. So what we need to do here is edit our Docker file again, and we need to add a new line here, and at the end we need to add daemon off into the nginx configuration, which will stop it from running as a daemon. In other words, nginx will no longer push itself into the background. So we've made that change. I can do docker build again, and we're gonna rerun the exact same command. So it's gonna replace the old image with the newest at tag latest, grab our docker file, and we're gonna see this change will be relatively quick. See up here, it's using cache, using cache, using cache. So it keeps using cached commands before, so it does not have to rerun them. And then when it sees something new, it reruns that command. So here we made all change to this last run command, which has all the install stuff. So it is actually the longer thing. It needs to rerun all of it but it did grab from cache what it could, so it did not have to rerun all these other commands above that. So as you build on to Docker images, it's possible to reuse work you did before and not have to keep rebuilding the entire Docker image. Okay, that's done. Do Docker image LS. We have our old image here that got untagged because we replaced it with the latest of this tag. And I can do Docker run again and let's see, remove IT, make it interactive, run bash. And if I run nginx, nginx will stay in the foreground, right? We saw it didn't go into a new line here. So I'll exit out of that container, and instead of dash it, we'll do d to push it into the background. And instead of bash, we're going to run nginx. And now we'll see that this container has remained up and running. It hasn't stopped because nginx is running in the foreground, and Docker is able to keep track of it. Now we can't actually make commands, um, curl requests to it because we haven't shared a port or anything like that. So so we can't do anything with it just yet. So in the next video, we'll do a little bit more here. We'll, we'll get this up and running with a little bit of code and see some more details about what we can and need to add to our Docker file.